I read that Jay Z bet you a hundred thousand that Miguel Cotto uh, would beat Canelo, yeah. and sent you the money immediately after the yeah. loss. So we're promoting uh, Canelo at the time, mm -hmm. Golden Boy, and uh, he's promoting Cotto. And so I said, you know what? Why don't we why don't we place a bet here of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Okay, but it goes to charity. Okay. So Canelo wins, my charity wins the two fifth, and sure enough, he paid it on the spot. I think the next day, the wow. check was in the bank. So no, look, Jay Z loves boxing. Uh, he knows his boxing, but he's uh, he's a guy who uh, you took advantage who, of him. who pays his bets. You you no, I did it. Yeah, it you was did. a close you fight. Did. It was a close fight. Actually, I, a lot of people think Cotto beat him, <laughs> <laughs> but I had the insight. So. <laughs> What made you dis what made you get into the promotion game? When I started, um when you were Bob Arum? I was with Bob Arum. I was kind of breaking away from Bob Arum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our contract was expiring. Mm -hmm. I I came out guns blazing saying I want to help out the athletes. Right. I want to be the promoter who is like looking out for the fighters. Okay. That was that was my main motive. That was that was why I started boxing. Right. Yeah. So you got into the fight game and you said, you know what? I want to help the boxer. Um, I don't think they're getting a fair shake, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, I'm going to start my own thing. I'm going to be, because you started this, you're still fighting. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was fighting at the time. I was active. Um, I started when I fought Fernando Vargas. Okay. And I remember being in the dressing room and I was beat up. I knocked him out in the 11th round, but I was just beat up. And I said to myself, you know what? I think it's it's almost time to retire. What am I going to do after boxing? What am I going to do? Yeah, I can drift off to the sunset and, you know, go by myself a little boat and live on the beach or whatever. But mm -hmm. I knew that I was not going to be happy in the long run. So I said to myself, let me let me do something within the sport because I love boxing. There's a lot of room for improvement. A lot of fighters are saying, well, they need help, this and that. So let me start Golden Boy. And that's where it, that's where it was born. So let me. How, how do you how do you convince? Because okay, you got top rank. Um, I think Floyd has a company. Uh, I don't know if he's still with Al Hyman or anything like that. So I don't know what's going on with that. Eddie Hearn. I think Eddie Hearn has a fight company. Sure. Uh, is Don King still in the business? There, there, there yeah. are four or five big promotions. Yeah. So how does Oscar De La Hoya goes and sits in mm -hmm. someone's home or his mom's home or his dad's home or have a conversation and says? Golden Boy is the right promotion sure. company for you. Well, first of all, yeah, there's there's Bob Arum, uh, Don King, not really. He's right. yeah, there. I mean, both guys are like 95 years old. <laughs> I don't know how Bob is doing it, but right. he's. I want some of that stuff that he's taking. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, because he, you see him, he's happy promoting at 95. So you have Bob, Eddie Hearn. Uh, so literally at PBC, which is Al Heyman. So there's there's like four of us right. out there. The difference with all four, okay, that nobody can say, okay, I was a fighter. I laced up the gloves. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to take the punch. I know what it feels like to have to sell a fight, to go out there and promote. I know how it feels like to being taken advantage of because I'm a fighter. So I know all that. And plus, a huge advantage is I'm the only Hispanic fighter to ever start a national boxing promotional. promotional company. So if you take a look at all the Hispanic fighters mm -hmm. that, you know, you, you identify with them, they look up to you. So it makes it easier for me to sign them and to, and to guide them, you know? I mean, not only do you speak their language, literally you speak yeah. their language figuratively sure. because you are a fighter. Yeah. And you went through it. I mean, you had the, the, the great amateur background Absolutely. and so forth and so on. But when you look at boxing, People don't box by choice, it's necessity. And sometimes I feel it's yeah. easier to take advantage of someone that comes from a disinvent, uh, sure. impoverished situation okay. Okay. because you throw 100,000, 500,000, and then you sign the guy and then you're gonna make money over fist. Did, did you experience some of that growing up when, when you were in the fight game, when promoters tried to take yeah. advantage of Oscar De La Hoya? I, I experienced it right when I got back from the Olympic games. I experienced it when somebody promised me a million dollars, okay? I'm 18 years old. Here's a million dollars to sign with me. You know how much I saw? How much you get? I saw like 50,000. What? 
what? About fifty thousand dollars. So where the other nine fifty go? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> taxes? I don't know. <laughs> nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Even, um, even back then, taxes, yeah. the tax bracket wasn't no ninety percent Oscar. I learned the hard way. I really? Did. I did. I learned the. But that was the best. That was a blessing in disguise because I learned fast. Mm -hmm. I learned how to take care of my money. I learned who to look out for. Okay, why do I need a manager? Why do I need an advisor? Okay, I need a promoter because the promoter is going to guide my career and take me to the next level. I can't do what a promoter is doing for me. Right. Fighters need a promoter. So I said, okay, let me, that's, that's a percentage off my pie. Right. Okay. Um, but everything else I can just pay on salary. Right. That's it. So I'm keeping all of my pie right. to myself. Right. So that's, yeah, I, I learned the hard way, you know, fairly quick. And because you need tax people, because you hear, see a Everything. lot of boxers Everything. that run into yeah. tax problems. Yeah. And But let me ask you this. I was reading somewhere. It's like, I think I, I was reading that the guy was explaining like Mike Tyson and, and, and Don King. Mm -hmm. Like if he's, you go to a, your promoter, Bob Merriman at the time, right. and you say, Bob, I need 20 tickets. Those are not gifts. You got to pay for those. That's going to come out your salary, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, and whoever's participating in the fight, yeah. it's coming off their percentage as well. So, yeah, nothing's free. Right. So you get, so, oh, man, my promoter bought me this Rolls Royce. <laughs> my promoter no. bought me this, this mean coat and this Rolex. And right. look, fighter, did, did fighters always know that even though they were getting these things, that that was actually coming out of their pocket or they thought they were just being gifted those things? Uh, it's, it's, it's a couple of things. A, a, a lot of athletes, a lot of fighters, they just, they just turn away. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to, they don't want to, I guess, you know, know that, it, that that's real. You know, they just, mm -hmm. they just want to shy away from it and let somebody else deal with it. You know, um, I think that it's the f athlete's responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, it's for instance, Mike Tyson and Don King. Well, People keep saying, well, Don King ripped off Mike Tyson and this and that. Well, Mike Tyson made about $400, $500 million. Mm -hmm. That's his money. What he does with that, it's not Don but King's he, fault. Right. So, you know, you have to, as an athlete, as a person, you have to, you have to look out for your best interests as well. You mentioned earlier when Floyd was, he bought out of his contract with Top Rank, yeah. you had started your company, sure. and for like, what, 16, 17 fights, you promoted Floyd. I did promote Floyd, yeah. And then, you know, he was, the time when he was making the, uh, I think it was a Showtime contract, 30, 40 million dollars, yeah, we promoted all those fights. Right. Um, you know, great experience for us. It was, um, you know, it, it put us on the map, obviously, and, you know, we're now one of the top promoters in the world. So, look, boxing, the one thing that, I, I'm not too keen on and with boxing is that it became a business. It wasn't a business before. Yes, you're making money. I made a lot of money, but I treated boxing as, 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 you know, trying to be great as a platform for me to be great, not a businessman. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before to something.